It's Friday. We are hot off our first ever live stream of a football game. Football game was a little bit of a dud, but we do break that down. Lots of news, talk about injuries, and of course the rest of the matchups. And then a fantasy face-off where Andy's looking prepared just in case the world runs out of water. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. This is Alan Lazard, a.k.a. the Lazard King, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 7th. It's going to be a busy day here on the show. I feel like I was just here with you, fine gentlemen. Because you were. Watching the best, worst game of our lives. That was... A brutal watch, and while you want to give credit to defenses, because I do think that the defenses, they played their hearts out. They yeah, did. The Broncos busted their butts. I still think it was uh, worse offenses than great defenses. Sure. Yes, both quarterbacks, their helmets were on backwards in this game, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, unfortunately that meant a lot of sadness for fantasy players that didn't start like the Denver defense. Uh, you know, or Alec Pierce, apparently, you know, there were, there weren't sure. many happy fantasy players from the game last night. Uh, we will talk about it. I know Russell Wilson will dominate that conversation. We've got foot clan Friday news and notes, the fantasy forecast. So more matchups on today's show and the fantasy face off plus the wheel of shame, Ooh. uh, going for the dynasty level. Uh, the, yeah. Back to back titles You're here. You're doing incredible on that. And shout out. Yes. Shout out. Big, big shout out, Foot Clan. Uh, football time with the footballers yesterday on Twitch. Uh, even though the game was rough, that was so much fun hanging out with y'all, just cutting it up, talking fantasy football, living, you know, ho hoping for props to hit. And just, it was just, it was a, it was really, really fun despite the game. Yeah, I had a great time. And we were slotted in to do the first half. I, I, I know we uh, we look forward to more of these types of events with you, and we appreciate y'all not just yes. coming to the event, but hanging around. I mean, the whole yeah, time yeah, yeah. Uh, that we were on, calling the game, reacting, being baffled by some of the play <laughs> on the field. I mean, it was it was really one of the worst football games. Yes. It was a game where we all needed each other, <laughs> and you know we were here for you. You were here for us. We, that, I mean, that game was off the amount of times that the Denver Broncos had a first down in Colts territory is out is is mind blowing considering that from from all of those drives I got like three total points. Well we'll circle back to it in a moment, but it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every single Friday, we say thank you to our supporters at jointhefoot.com. We give away a $100 gift card to Fantasy Champs, where you can get a trophy, belt, ring, celebrate your fantasy football universe. And today's winner, Molly Edwards from Patreon. So, Molly, thank you for your support, and uh, we'll send you that $100 gift card from fantasychamps.com. Jason, now I can hand you the baton back, and we can discuss Russ. With Oof. disgust. Oof. Yeah, I mean, the combination of Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett, you, you, you know. It's potent. It is. Ooh, it was, it's so bad. The the designs, the, the, the offense they're running, the offense that isn't being run by Russell Wilson, there's... There was no redeemable quality. There, he he had bad reads. He had bad throws. He made he had a QBR of fifteen. Poor decision. Like there was not a glimmer of hope. Or oh man, I could take this silver lining out. Then in a, in the press conference, 
He's still going Broncos country. Let's ride. He does not get it. There, something is wrong above the shoulders. Well, yeah, this is a uh, case with the head coach and the quarterback. It's, you know, how to lose a locker room for dummies. I mean, this is a lesson being taught. And I, you know, I see people on Twitter. They say, why are you being a hater? Did you watch the game? Do you know we cover football? <laughs> let me let me give you a score summation. Three, 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 three. I mean, how, how do you blow a game? Well, you throw two interceptions in enemy territory uh, over the over the last quarter of the game. Yeah, and I, I've I've seen some people say, "Oh, you're, well, that's it's not fair. You're attacking the man's character. You know what I mean? You're attacking Russell Wilson, the person. I think that the character he has created, which he's talked about, you know, oh, Mister Unlimited, right? I think that's the problem. <laughs> like genuinely, I, yes, I am. Like sometimes uh, it might be his character that is the that is needing to be fixed well i like i like the thought that he is playing a character and that's what you're attacking because it seems that way at this point in time that he is a character a character he's a caricature sure as uh <laughs> i one mean, would say in this office and and regardless the the story that this you know what comes out of this is what did to, to do in fantasy moving forward which you can't lean on oh. russ i mean we're we're on yesterday's show we sat here and said well at the end of the day it seems like we're willing to go with russ tonight at home against Indianapolis without Shaq Leonard very reluctantly uh over Trevor Lawrence right. over Carson Wentz and look I I don't know if I don't know if Carson Wentz Trevor Lawrence is going to put up a better performance than 21 for 39 for 274 no touchdowns two picks they probably will I'm going with yes yeah and like, but they could get injured sure. you know first play of the game and and somehow have a worse uh box score than that so, uh, yeah, it, it was a tough one. Melvin Gordon, 15 carries. Mike Boone, seven carries. Mike Boone involved in the passing game, three for 47. Melvin as well. Cortland Sutton, five for 74. It was it was fine. Um, Jerry Judy, three for 53. Should have had more. You could say that every game. I, yeah, you can. But at this one, I'll lay at Russ's feet because he has eyes for Sutton. Should have had Hamler to win the game. Should have had Judy. When he threw the pick to Gilmore, a um, little bit of the hyper focus, I think, on Cortland Sutton right now from a comfort level. And moving forward, other than, you know, how, what's the ceiling for Melvin Gordon in this offense that is now going to be, you know, in the bottom three? I think the ceiling is actually pretty good. Uh, when you've got that kind of volume and, and workload, he, he looked to be used as a three down back for the majority of the game. The utilization was great. And Indianapolis, the, the Colts are a good run defense. That is kind of the strength of, of their defense. Their upcoming schedule is not that great. So, yeah, I mean, I, Melvin Gordon showed me enough to where I think he is, you know, a, a solid RB2 the rest of the season. All right, for the second consecutive week on the Indianapolis side, Alec Pierce with a better fantasy performance than Michael Pittman Jr. Eight receptions for Pierce on nine targets, 81 yards, five for 59 for Pittman. Uh, of all the things I saw happening in the chat, non Russ related, Michael Pittman with question marks at the end of the sentence yeah. was number one. So I think people are expecting or expected a lot more out of Pittman than what they're getting right now. Yeah, I mean, you could tell obviously the the end of the game when Alec Pierce was coming alive and catching. I mean, he just made some incredible catches that some, were that one Houdini catch where the ball just. All of a sudden, showed up like between his legs. I uh, there was another one across the middle. Matt Ryan was talking about it after the game. He was saying, "I threw this ball. It was a crappy ball. I assumed it was incomplete, and then somehow he came up with it." You know, singing Alec Pierce's praises. That being said, the especially the first half of this game, when you talk about Michael Pittman and, the, and that side, Michael Pittman's going down the field, and they were not able to protect Matt Ryan whatsoever. Towards the end of that game when Alec Pierce was coming alive, um, Browning got injured, left that game, and all of a sudden Matt Ryan had a little bit of time to throw the ball. They they started getting into a rhythm at the end of the game. So my question going forward is, you know, what is the schedule for the Colts? Is Are, are they going to be, you know, dealing with good pass rushes? Because that Matt Ryan is still good from a clean pocket, and horrendous from a bad pocket, and he's had almost exclusively bad pockets. He doesn't throw down the field a lot, regardless of the pocket. And it could be argued Alec Pierce is better down the field than Michael Pittman is. So 
He's he's probably faster. He's and, definitely faster. And the, the the Patrick Sertain situation, it's real. Like that's a really good cornerback. That's true. Now, and this is not. I, I'm not insinuating Pittman's not a valuable fantasy asset, but from a a top end perspective, with how bad this offense has been, I mean, Russ was the story. If they win that game, Indianapolis's ineptitude is the story. You know, people calling for Nick Foles or other options at oh, the quarterback Nick, position. Nick Foles is not going to do better. Uh, so uh, it's just kind of the ceiling right now without Jonathan Taylor there, uh, Olave or Pittman rest of the season. Ooh, that's a very fair question. Uh, oh, my gosh, it might be Olave. Yeah, it's very close. I, I would I would lean Pittman slightly just because Michael Thomas is coming back. Uh, I think you know Olave's been great, is talented, and I I love him. He we he's in my lineup later today. So <laughs> I mean I'm I'm pro Olave here. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Kyle Pitts has been ruled out with his hamstring injury. My thoughts are that he will not score this week. My thoughts are that you will score more from your tight end position this week than what you have averaged for the season with Kyle Pitts now that you have to put someone else in. If you're looking to the waiver wire, um, someone like Tyler Conklin is still out there in a lot of leagues and could be a PPR option to throw in, in your lineup. Can I... Can I mention a name that I should not mention? Oh, sure. Uh, please. And no, it's not O.J. Howard. What about Taysom Hill? Taysom Hill Ooh. is playing tight end. Uh, he It looks like we're going to get Andy Dalton. I mean, that that's at least what it seems like. They're trying to get Winston healthy. I don't, you know, he has not practiced this week. Is Taysom Hill a panic button, break the glass, and... Um, is that like a hope? Not not a hope, but is that factoring in the potential for him to play quarterback should Andy Dalton get injured? It's just the upside of, you know, 10 plays designed for Taysom Hill because the game plan doesn't include Winston. So it seems like you go into the game and you say Hill's going to be in on these packages, and if he makes a play on them, he's better than Irv Smith. He's better than Tyler Conklin. He's better than O.J. Howard. Uh Am I am I silly? Am I, I a goofball? The it's it's certainly desperate to go with Taysom Hill. Uh, five carries this past week, so we've seen four, three, and five out of Taysom Hill. The 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 only like the the logic to me would be if it really is Andy Dalton. If they get in the red zone, you're more likely to see a Taysom Hill wildcat run than if if Jameis is the quarterback so that, that it there is a little bit of logic but to me I I would still go with Conklin I'd go with like Hayden Hurst uh for the Bengals you would that, play Hayden Hurst oh yeah in that matchup against the Ravens there's going to be so many points okay all right I just throwing it out there but, living, I like to live dangerously and without points at the tight end position that yeah. is kind of my objective you have fared well yeah i mean the 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 problem is the floor like is he hit he was five for 21 and had the touchdown but it's like five carries for 21 yards versus a tight end you, you don't get a, a half a point you don't get a full point because there's no receptions going on so if it's a tight end gives you, you know three for 20 like you're you'd rather have the three for 20 rashad penny returned to a full practice that's good news he'll be playing this for week. him not for Kenneth Walker. No, not Kenneth Walker. Well, look, I mean, Penny had a monster week last week. I think you can it, stay in those flames with the volume he got and the fact that he has big playability. You're not going to bench him. I am benching Rashad Penny. You are, apparently. Uh, I mean, The matchup I, is rough. Yeah, just, uh, just because, I mean, Rashad Penny so far on the season, he looked amazing last week, and I, am, I have been a Rashad Penny stand for a long time, but that was the Detroit Lions. You know, the, the previous three weeks, he hadn't scored eight fantasy points in half PPR. He plays the Lions, has a big blow-up game. Uh, that one we could see coming. Like in the DFS pass, he was yeah. we took him as the plus 3,000 for uh, leading the league in rushing that week. Against New Orleans, in New Orleans. Not as great. I, I'm not saying you have to bench Penny, but you certainly can. 
You going to bench him for Raheem Mostert after a, after leading the league in in rushing? No, I would I'd play Penny over Mostert. You but know, it's like if you have if you're making a like James Conner against Philadelphia or Rashad Penny. I, I would go James Conner. I would okay. go De we, Devin Singletary or Brees Hall or Keenan Allen not practicing. Josh Palmer limited with an ankle injury, and now Gerald Everett pops up on the injury report Thursday Man. after a full practice on Wednesday. Everett is a question mark right now. And uh, Kyle, if you get news on Everett over the course of the show, please buzz in because uh, you, you probably won't though because they're on the West. When guys pop up midweek, you know when when they practice them full on Wednesday and then they get injured on Thursday, you have to have a replacement. There's a good chance he is not able to go, so all the people we talked about for Pitts apply here. Jalen Waddle upgraded from a DNP to a limited practice for Thursday. Tyreek Hill added to the report with a quad injury, and, um, you know, there's some question marks now with these receiving options for Miami. Yeah, I mean, this was really sad. Tyreek Hill was in a smash position. Um, now I believe there was a quote saying, we hope he'll play. Yeah, they're they're treating the injury and hopeful that he plays. That's what the coach said. Uh, all right, we've got the Lions situation. Amon Ross St. Brown will practice for the first time this week. Still TBD. I assume how he responds in practice will determine whether he's out there against the Patriots. Yep, and they have the bye week next week. Just a reminder of that. So I'd, I'd put the odds that he's out. Okay. Uh, DeAndre Swift will not play. Josh Reynolds, DJ Chark, and TJ Hawkinson all limited on Thursday. Uh, just make sure that they are out there if you are counting on them. The Bills. Isaiah McKenzie returned to practice on Thursday in a non-contact jersey off the concussion. Do we think he'll play? It, it's always a great sign to have someone progressing through the protocol. Um, th this means he's on track to potentially play. You, you won't know until you know Saturday or maybe even Sunday, but uh, for those that are looking at Shakir as a, a really good you know, flyer pick. Obviously, he is not someone you want if Isaiah McKenzie clears protocol. Dawson Knox ruled out with a hamstring injury, foot injury. Dawson Knox has yet to take uh, a healthy form this year. His, his season has been He's trying to get really back too quick is how it feels because every week he tries to get back out there. Doesn't really work out. But, yeah, huge disappointment if you thought he could contribute. Deontay Johnson added to the injury report with a hip injury. Limited on Thursday. Bail out, man. This <laughs> week against Buffalo. Yeah, a hip injury against the Buffalo Bills. Rookie quarterback on the road. This is a – I know he's one of the studs. And if you're, Kyle Phillips or Deontay Johnson? Uh, I wouldn't go that okay. far down. Robert Woods, though. Yes, I would. Do, Curti you, do, you, do you take Deontay Johnson, the name, the value, and try to trade him right now? I, I don't hate it. Zay Jones. Will play in week five against the Texans. Curtis Samuel missed practice due to an illness on Wednesday and Thursday. That is, uh, I don't know if this is like the Josh Jacobs situation, staying away from the team, maybe going to play on Sunday. Jahan Dotson not practicing, won't be playing. Uh, but you have, right now, Terry McLaurin, the only healthy commander wide receiver of note. Yep. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy forecast. All right, back into the matchups. Yesterday we covered the Giants, Packers, Lions, Patriots, Steelers, Bills, Texans, Jags, Falcons, Buccaneers, Seahawks, Saints, Chargers, and Browns. So if you want to hear those matchups, you can just click on yesterday's episode. But listen to these first. We've got eight more matchups today. The Titans at 2-2 two and two taking on the 2-2 two and two Washington Commanders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Tennessee, minus one and a half. The over-under is 43. And uh, here we go. Tennessee, Washington, they've both allowed 10 passing touchdowns through four weeks. That's the most in the NFL. And so... Passing games you don't have confidence in, and yet defenses that have given up a ton of points to the passing game. Yeah, I mean, these uh, on the Manders' side, they're home. Wentz 
with some of, you know, I, I think Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin are fine starts. Terry McLaurin I actually like as a start this week. I don't think Tennessee's secondary is going to scare me, and we've brought up uh, the fact that with Jahan Dotson out of the way, the type of targets Terry McLaurin is getting down the field, I think that goes up this week. So this is a – this is a if you, if you can't confidently start Terry McLaurin this week, then that's a big, big problem. What about Logan Thomas? Yep, that's because where I was going to go. Because with these injuries, Thomas getting healthier, five targets a week, is he on the radar for that, uh, you know, the Kyle Pitts manager? Maybe it ends up being the Everett manager. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, if you've got a late uh, week tight end scratch and Conklin is not out there, you could certainly do worse than Logan Thomas. He ran 33 routes last week, targeted on 18% of them, like – you could certainly do worse for a, in a pinch, and I would expect that to go up because of Dotson not playing. So far this year, 13.1 points per game given up by Tennessee to the tight end position if you're looking at that option. Uh, Antonio Gibson. Oh, man. It looks like Brian <laughs> Robinson is going to make his debut. I listened to the interview with Brian Robinson yesterday. You know, you're going to talk about a good story. Is this guy getting back out on the field, yeah. doing what he loves? after uh, just a terrible, unforeseen circumstance with the, the shooting, the carjacking that he survived. Not sure if he's going to be out there. His kind of attitude is day by day. The team's going to figure that out. He did say he did more at practice than he thought he was going to do. But the days are numbered for Antonio Gibson maybe being in your lineup. Yeah, but, but this do week, you play him this week? It's... It's not a bad situation for Gibson. The I know that the Titans are favored. I this game could be sneaky fun. I think that it, these aren't necessarily like it's not a a loaded roster on both sides where you're really excited for all the fantasy pieces. But I think at the end of the day, you you like with the over under forty three. I I think we're gonna hit the over. What about Algier? Would you play Algier or Gibson? I would play – that's a good question. I'd go Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I would go Algier there, Jason. Split the difference Just for take us. the volume of Algier? I, I would because I, to part of this discussion is whether Brian Robinson's active on Sunday. And so it's definitely Algier if he's active. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's very, very close. But Algier against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I know that they're going to run even when they shouldn't, but I don't think he's going to do much. So I, I lean Antonio Gibson. Some Algier fears against the Buccaneers? Yes. Ooh, okay. Well done. Okay. On the other side, Derrick Henry, of course, uh, you're playing him. He's the RB7 on the year right now. What uh, What's going on with the Vermont snow model? Yeah, do we have anything uh, on the ground so, in Vermont? Last I saw was a future forecast that snow was on the way. I have not confirmed that snow has fallen. This is a pretty big deal, especially considering that this isn't a great matchup for Derrick Henry. I know you look at the Manders and you think, oh, that's a bad defense. They've been very good against the run right now. They're uh, eighth in fantasy points given up. If you adjust for uh, the schedule that they have played, they are number two against the run in ex Ooh. you know in expectation. So, uh, we need that snow. A, yeah, we need the snow to fall. And, and, of course, some of why they've been good against the run is not necessarily because they are tough to run against, but because it's been very easy to throw the ball against them. Uh, so we'll we'll see which way the fantasy points come for the Titans. It's almost always through Derrick Henry, though. How's he do if it just rains in Vermont? Is that does that contribute mm, at all? Does to Does not apply. Not cold yeah. enough. Hail. For the Yeti. What about hail? Can we get to the hail level? Nope. No, I think that's just for denting cars. Yeah. Huh. It's danger. Hail's dangerous. Um, Snow is fun. Robert Woods, Mike, start of the week. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in on that. 26% targets through the last three weeks, and that was with Traylon Burks on the field. And the Manders giving up top 12 wide receiver points every single week. Kyle Phillips, I do think, is a a, a sneaky bench stash in case you see sure. targets going his way like week one. Uh, it, de it never hurts to throw a rookie on your bench right before Sunday to see what happens. Is he perfectly ready to go? As far as I know, okay. I believe he will be back out that, there. Yeah. As the other name is Westbrook Akine. Who he will also play outside. He's he's so difficult because he was. I think he ran the most routes on the team last week and ended up with peak physical condition, zero <laughs> targets. Oh. And and the crazy thing is, is we and, and I saw Matthew Betts, our injury expert, starting this. I don't I don't know if he's put together a full team, but we need to put the all cardio first team out there. Oh, 
Allen Robinson, Paris Campbell, Paris Campbell, uh, and maybe you get Westbrook Akine onto that roster. And um, I would add AJ Green when he's out there, but he's not really running that hard. So I don't think the cardio is very good. I'd like to nominate uh, Brian Edwards, Elijah as well. Moore as well. Oh, yeah. Brian oh. Edwards is hall first ballot Hall yeah. of Famer at that. <laughs> yes, he, he has is. somehow been able to succeed at this for multiple years. <laughs> Yeah, what do we say? Targets are earned, right? They are. <laughs> so you're just running around. Uh, Those MBS, guys are proof that MBS is are on earned. that team. Yeah, I mean he gets some. Yeah, he gets but I mean he's just targets. I mean he runs a long ways down the field to not get targeted. True. All right, we're going to move on here after a quick break. <laughs> Miami the Dolphins, 3-1, and one, taking on the New York Jets. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Miami, minus 3.5. And, um. and he's almost upset of the week. I mean, this one, this one, you got to be with me on this one. The, the, there's a lot of ways that this can make sense. No Tua, possibly uh, either no Tyree Kill, or at best, literally the best-case scenario, is that they have a less than 100% Waddle and a less than 100% Tyree Kill because both guys dealing with leg injuries right now. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to take the Jets to to knock them off at home. The over-under is 46, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. And, um, you know, Tua not going to be put on IR. Is that what we heard this morning? Yes, sir. Okay. Teddy Bridgewater getting an opportunity. They've kind of been without Chase Edmonds. That's a question for fantasy managers. Is Chase Edmonds going to emerge uh, if these wide receivers are struggling? Well, what's really amazing, and it it genuinely is shocking given the fact that we have uh, plenty of career for both Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert, but they have gone and and done a full life swap because the routes <laughs> run, the right. third downs. Like a the, Freaky Friday thing? Exactly yes. right. This is Lindsay Lohan, and I'm not sure which one she is because <laughs> – well, she's act. She was. Oh, I was thinking of the pear trap. I was thinking she was both. <laughs> but freak. Who was the mom? Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, that Island. was it. Yeah. So, I mean, so which it, one's Jamie Lee Curtis? I think it's Raheem Mostert. <laughs> I don't think we remember. You think Mostert's Jamie think, Lee Curtis? I think Mostert is Jamie Lee Curtis. But here's here's the situation, of, and what I'm saying is so weird is that all of the the pass catching work the the you know they bring in packages of players in the NFL the the down and distance the certain situational football where they say this is who's been practicing this week in that role in those roles it's been Mostert coming in who has not been a pass catching back for his career even though you have Chase Edmonds who has been a pass catching back for his career i because of the history and the talent and i think genuinely where these guys excel i do think that could switch back you know they could find the solution at the end of the movie and go. Oh yeah, now I'm now I'm in the right role. Well, they ha yeah, that you have to realize that the other person maybe they don't have it so much better than you. I think right. we need to realize that the pass catching role you speak of has been not valuable at all. It's like been the, stolen by Jalen Waddle. The volume is non-existent. I mean, you're talking I think it's about because they've got the wrong guy in the role. But but yes. Uh, so my point is, um, I I think it might. Currently, what you have to expect is what you've been seeing uh, from this team, which says with those hobbled uh, players, it might be better for Mostert, not for Chase Edmonds. And I'm playing Mostert this week. He had 72% of snaps, fourth consecutive week where his snap count increased, 18 opportunities, and they're playing uh, a Jets defense that's 19th against the run. I'm going to look at Mostert as someone that's going to take the load off of Teddy Bridgewater and... Um, I feel more desperate starting Chase Edmonds this week. I feel like uh, if you have to, right, you got running back problems. You know, you lost Patterson, you lost Taylor, you lost Javante. Like, that's happening all over the place. Mm -hmm. And at least in that low hand role, he is involved <laughs> inside the five. So he has now been transported into a goal line back, Chase Edmonds has. Which is what Lohan was. Right. Um, Would you play Daryl Henderson against Dallas or Chase Edmonds? Oh, gosh. Mike. Why are you being so gross? Yeah. Uh, because this, because it's gross out in the Rashad streets. Rashad Penny is the answer to that question. He's not on this bench that I'm talking about. Okay, well, certainly. Um, Taysom Hill's not an option either. Uh, no, because no, he plays tight end. I'll try Chase Edmonds against the Jets in that okay. situation. Yeah, Daryl Henderson freaks me out. I, I'm going to take the matchup as well. On the other side, Brees Hall. 
Brees Hall is currently leading the NFL in targets at the running back position tied with Austin Eckler. Brees Hall has a touchdown or six plus receptions in all four games. Brees Hall has been a top uh, 20 running back in his last three starts. Last week, 17 carries. And this is the important week, not only because it's the most recent, but because it's the only one with Zach Wilson. They brought Zach Wilson in. I was worried, okay, they're going to need someone to pass protect. They gave Brees Hall 17 carries, six targets, 66% of the snaps. That is elite running back utilization. His talent is great. I think he is a basically someone you have to start the rest of the season. Yeah, if you get – this is probably the last opportunity you'll have to pick him up on the cheap if you're banking on that breakout because if the – if the opportunities stay where they were last week through the duration of the year, you're going to have a very valuable player. Uh, so if I'm looking at Brees Hall starting him this week or A.J. Dillon against the Giants, what are you doing? I would go Brees Hall for sure. Yeah. I think now I'd the Dolphins have been good against the running back position, but they Brees have. with the targets. Now, you only caught two of the six. Yeah, they were not good targets. Because Zach Wilson's biggest struggle is, is short area He's targets. the ball. <laughs> no, he, he he had a good game last week. He just couldn't – he struggled like Cam Newton used to struggle on the simple throws in the flat, yeah, underneath, was, the conk-conk plays. There was a, a wheel route where Brees was wide open. I mean, that would have been a touchdown, and he threw it behind him. So uh, not every target is the same. I would rather be uh, tied with Austin Eckler getting my targets from Justin Herbert. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, you, you get the volume. And Miami has been really good. Top five against running backs. If you adjust for the schedule, 16th middle of the pack. So they might not be quite as strong against the run as as they seem so far through four weeks. Garrett Wilson tied with Devontae Adams for the most targets inside the 10 this year. Uh, Elijah Moore has zero yeah. of those. Elijah Moore on the all-cardio team as well. Yeah, I'd, Elijah Moore was the targets per route run. He was a superstar last year, and that has absolutely plummeted. Meanwhile, uh, you got a shocking stat. Corey Davis has 74 or more receiving yards in three of four games. Yeah. Corey Davis. Yeah, uh, these, these offenses, they don't really pay attention to the average draft position of these players. Currently wide receiver 25. Yeah. Just yeah. saying, like, a name that, it, like, certainly we have not been talking about. I, I also, a name... I haven't even seen on Twitter. Like, yeah, because the conversation is about the other two big names. You know, it's like what's happened to Elijah Moore, the talent, the the draft capital, what we saw last year. Oh, let's talk about Garrett Wilson. Uh, Corey Davis is the forgotten man, and it's really difficult to start a player that you perceive as the third option for a for a but mediocre you, but offense. You might be wrong, but that's what I. That's why I'm bringing it up. I'm not saying I'm like, yeah, this is. We're going to outsmart everyone. We're going to throw Corey Davis in there. It's just you. we need to pay attention. Like you said, Jay, one game with Zach Wilson, Corey Davis target share shot up to 21% last week. It's a, you, he's six, you need to just keep an eye on what's going on. He's five inches taller than Elijah Moore. He's very friendly down the field for his quarterback. And then Garrett Wilson makes life really easy close to the line of scrimmage, slant routes, opportunities after the catch. It almost feels like Elijah Moore has kind of – uh, no place to settle in right now on this offense, despite his talent. Um, but Jay, uh, Tyler Conklin, Jason, you have him as your start of the week this week? Yeah, I, and he, he's someone that I think in this matchup against the Dolphins, who are 26th against tight end, he was targeted and running routes a lot with Zach Wilson, so he's just a PPR option. The Chicago Bears are 2-2, two and two and they take on the 3-1 and one Minnesota Vikings. I, I don't think I really processed the three and one Vikings, yeah. who, who who are likely yep. to move to four and one this week. DraftKings sportsbook line: Minnesota minus seven and a half. The over under is forty four points. Uh, last week, the Chicago Bears, listen, gentlemen, a season high eleven completions. We're on the way. Wait, we're on the way. I read but that you said season high. Yeah, I but know. then you said the number eleven, which is very low. Three hundred ninety. Total passing yards, guys. In oh, in four games. Oh my gosh! Wow. So, um, please don't start a pass catcher on the Chicago Bears. No, don't take solace in the Mooney situation. Yeah. You know, four catches as four of eleven. Um, he's a good player, but you're you're really really, uh, you know, you're gambling, right? You are. But 
Okay, the, the big question here is what do you do with David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert? Montgomery returned to a limited practice last week. Khalil Herbert has been great when Montgomery has been off the field. 22 and 20 opportunities. The matchup is not scary against the Minnesota Vikings. 28th against fantasy running backs right now. But how do you possibly project the the workload I, to go? I start the starter. And yes. if David Montgomery is active, I'm going to start. Him? I'm going to okay. plug him in my lineup and start him. If he is not active, and I do not expect him to be active, but uh, it's, yeah, it's still questionable. It, it is questionable. He was back at practice, but the injury looked like it would probably be a multi-week injury. Uh, if it, but if he's back, if they say he's good to go, I'm going to start him, and I'm not going to start Khalil Herbert in hopes that he splits enough work. Uh, to, to be relevant obviously if David Montgomery is not there Khalil Herbert is a phenomenal start gotcha what about the other side of the ball Dalvin Cook is in Justin Jefferson is in the question really is do where are you with Adam Thielen it was a rough start to the year just not really being involved but it's over, been good lately but over the last couple of weeks eight targets for 61 against the Lions uh, eight catches for 72 yards against New Orleans Saints last year. He's they're they're getting a more balanced offense after the Week One where everything was Justin Jefferson, and then that completely failed against Philadelphia. So I think they just they, they had a correction. So even, are you confident in? Theory? Yeah, even even in the Philadelphia game where where you know it was a complete collapse by the Vikings, he had seven targets. He didn't have a right. great fantasy game, but uh, the utilization was good. No, I'm I'm absolutely fine starting. Uh, Adam Thielen and you, and you know more about that Philly defense now right early in the season right. you don't realize how legitimate some of these defenses are and later on you got like okay it makes sense that they struggled in that game uh moving on the 49ers two and two taking on the Carolina Panthers who are one and three uh the San Francisco 49ers defense was seen um laughing about town in Carolina looking forward to this matchup DraftKings Sportsbook line San Francisco Six and a half point road favorites. The over under is thirty nine. That gives Carolina a sweet sixteen points. I hope you have the Forty ers defense. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think they're getting sixteen <laughs> points. The Forty ers defense has been awesome. Uh, adjusted for schedule, they're awesome. Without it, and just looking at what they've done so far uh, this season, they're number one against quarterbacks, number two against running backs, number six against wide receivers, number Oof. five against tight ends. They, they're Oof. they're not giving up much anything yeah at, at all to anyone baker's going to do so many of those little pocket pump fake things before he falls down that it's going to be like if you get points for those in your fantasy league big week coming for baker but no i mean there's not a lot of uh storyline here it's christian mccaffrey no one else right that's exactly right correct not complicated dj Moore, put him on your bench it's not going to be a good week correct jimmy garoppolo can he get it going with George Kittle? That's what people want to know. Kittle coming off the injury. It's understandable that it might be a slower uh, reintegration into the offense, but, you know, Brandon Ayuk is a valuable target. Debo Samuel is going to be your number one target. Is there less of a place for George Kittle now than there was a couple years ago when he led the league in uh, passing yardage? I do not. Receiving yardage. Yeah, I mean, less of a place than then, sure, because, you know, with Ayuk and Debo – both on the roster and both healthy now, he, he doesn't quite have the same uh, participation that he had in the offense when you had pretty much one of those two guys in his dominant season. But he is still a good play. I you know If I had him and another decent option that I picked up while he was injured, I had Pat Fryermuth or whatever, I'm still putting George Kittle in the lineup despite two disappointing weeks because I want the big performance – <laughs> on my roster, not on my bench, and George Kittle is one of the few tight ends that can still do that. The passing defense for the Carolina Panthers is not their strength. They are still good against the run. They were top six on the season last year, and if you adjust for the schedule, they are the seventh best against running backs right now. And if you, looking so, at then Jeff what, Wilson. I say, looking at what Kittle did last year, it's very similar. Like he's all or nothing. Like, mm -hmm. but for. For the tight end landscape, a tight end that can be the number one on the week, multiple weeks in a row, you just stick with Kittle. And so, for Jeff Wilson, yeah, you know what? What decision do you make here based on Carolina being formidable and maybe having other options? Because Jeff was a, you know, he was a bench pickup for you before he became the starter. Sure, but he's just his volume is is just it's incredible. He's he is the running back position currently for the Forty Nine ers. Uh, TDP 
as far as I know, still going to miss the game. He's He would be the only running back. That's Ty to, Davis Price. Yeah. Did you shortcut that name that no one knows? TDP, baby. You know, okay. you know me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have decisions to make on your roster, Mike. Yes. You have A.J. Dillon. You have Ezekiel Elliott. Are you are you getting – Jeff Wilson is in for me. Really? Yes. It, the, the volume to me is just – is so safe. Look, the last three weeks since being – the starter, like the the monsoon game, he played a lot, but it was the monsoon game against Chicago in week one. Since then, 84, 75, 74. Those are his rushing yard totals, and he's thrown in five receptions as well. He's He feels safe and, to me, has ceiling. The Eagles travel to Arizona. They're 4-0. They take on the 2-2 two and two Cardinals. In Arizona, they're five-point favorites, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook line. The over-under is 48. It's a lot of points here. Arizona has a ridiculously bad streak of losing ball games at home. Uh, Do you know? I don't know. If it's you, almost been a calendar year. I was going to say it was October of last year when no. they last won a home game. It is currently October again. Yeah, they. I think they had won like thirty-two to five against Houston last year, and they haven't won since at home. They went on the road. This game is interesting. The Eagles have never won in Arizona, in this stadium, going back to two thousand and one. I also don't think they lose their next four games. Like I think there's almost no chance that the Eagles lose their next four matchups. They're sitting at four and zero. They have been uh, a great, great performer for fantasy players. Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, the monster week last week. AJ Brown's always in your lineup. Dallas Goddard is, I believe, Mike's start of the week this week. Yes. And you know Arizona's struggling against the tight end position. I don't think that you know. Regardless of how this game transpires, you're not adjusting anything that you've been doing with Philly. No, no, no. you're going to start all all four of the Philly passing game options in in Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, and and uh, Dallas Goddard. The question is, are you staying in the flames with Miles Sanders? Are you starting Miles Sanders or Jeff Wilson? Ooh, that is that's a tough question. It has a lot to do with game script to me. Is Arizona going to keep this game competitive or not? Because if if the running game is what dominates the second half, and we've seen two games this year where Philly didn't even score in the second half, you know maybe you're making a mistake with Miles. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's but it's, you've got to weigh game script and I mean touchdown upside. That I think Philadelphia is going to put up. up what is their implied implied total is twenty six point eight points. I mean, I want a running back who's on, on an, an implied team total over 25. Home should, favorites, should, which yes, the home, Philadelphia Eagles here will be home favorites in should, Arizona. It should <laughs> not be that Well, difficult. because Arizona, what does that mean? I, I'm saying Arizona is so bad at home, this is like an opposite, uh, you know, you you usually want the you home team. You ever seen that movie Freaky Friday? <laughs> Uh, I, I would start Miles Sanders over Jeff Wilson. I, I, that's how my rank is. The, the Cardinals too. have been beaten by running backs and tight ends, and I think they're going to continue this week. And wide receivers and, and other positions. Sure. They, you they, know. they haven't been that bad against wide receivers. They, it was they, a joke, Jason. Sure. It, was kind of a, it was a gag. Don't correct the gag. Okay. Well, my apologies. Right? I apologize. I'm supposed to lean into it, and then we bounce back and forth. It's kind of like an I'm, I'm, I'm. That's on me. But I'm used to jokes that like are funny. So it's like I didn't know it was a joke. Mm. That joke hurt. Mm. Yeah, that was too Well, deep. look, Arizona's going to win the game, so it's not it's not a complicated situation. Kyler Murray, quietly the quarterback six on the year amongst the disappointment in the fantasy community. And, and the fantasy community, can we agree that like if you have Kyler Murray, you're allowed to pick a different quarterback for the first half? Well, I, th this is a fact. The Cardinals have been the worst offense in the first half of football, and by some metrics, the, the single best offense in the second half of football. Uh, those things – Check out from what I've been watching. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if you could do a pivot. Yeah. Who starts quick on on a weekly basis? Uh, like usually the... Jalen Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> there <laughs> they've, you go. They've been putting yeah. up m massive first halves. Specifically, the second quarters have been outstanding for the Eagles, and then they kind of disappear in the second half and just let their defense shut them down. The defense of the Eagles has been really, really great. They've played some good offenses, so if you're just looking at, you know, uh, totals they've given up, you might go, oh, they're middle of the pack, but they have been – truly elite I think there's going to be problems with their pass rush against Kyler and in the offensive line uh, I would be happy to play the Eagles DST on the Cardinal side honestly Kyler he's he's an every week quarterback Connor if I can get out I would uh this particular week it I again running back is very difficult 
And then Hollywood Brown and Zach Ertz. The return of Rondale Moore has not looked like we ha can have any faith in playing Rondale Moore, and it has also eliminated the Dorch from any sort of dependable work. So it, I don't know how a player coming back takes out two guys, but it's nonsense. And then Zach Ertz is just – he's going to get six-plus receptions. Yeah, he's a good, good option at the tight end position against his former team. Dallas 3-1 and one, taking on the Los Angeles Rams – who are two and two? The DraftKings Sportsbook line: the Rams minus five and a half. The over/under is forty-three. Dallas's defense has been incredible, and you're going up against Matthew Sackford. Yeah, I mean oh, the the, got him. the pass rush is the strength of the Dallas Cowboys defense, and the weakness of the Los Angeles Rams offense is the offensive line. This is I would love to play the the Cowboys DST. I worry about pretty much all Ram options other than Cooper Cup right now. Alan Robinson, do you think he, he shed a tear at the retirement of Blake Bortles, his former <laughs> champion? Yeah, who knew that every year we've played the game, well, this is the best quarterback that Alan Robinson has played with. It turns out it was actually Blake Bortles all along. I think that Alan Robinson will go for five or more catches in this game. Now, I'm not saying to play him. Please don't. Don't do that. But I do think you're going to see a, a redistribution of some targets in this ball game, squeaky wheel style. The uh, uh, Brandon Marshall was on the new K Adams show. I okay, just, yeah. I caught the, the clip. It was really interesting because he was up in Adams. Is yeah, that I believe that. that? Yeah. I believe that's the name. But it was Brandon Marshall kind of breaking down, uh, talking about when, like those years in Chicago, where Jay Cutler smoking Jay Cuddy only through to Brandon Marshall. And he talked about like what Marshall had to deal with in the locker room of, Oh really? Like resentment. Yeah. Of like uh, Forte being pissed off all the time. Wow. Just, uh, uh, Hester being pissed off. And like the human, we uh, fantasy football is so easy to remove yourself from the human element of the game. And it totally exists. Like Alan Robinson right now, it's, you know, it, it it's easy to make the jokes of like, how do you get this huge contract and go and suck and you were bad last year? Are you just are you just done with football? But how mad right now is Allen Robinson? And is is he is Allen Robinson the type of person, the human who will truly raise that concern, or will he just bury it down and and, and live with no targets? When when you're an All Pro, former you know Pro Bowler, it's a lot. Like if you're Rondell Moore and you're losing targets to DeAndre Hopkins, whatever you didn't deserve them. You know what I mean? You, you you come in with a humility built into not having been a professional star. With Robinson, it's much more difficult. Big contract, previously been a, a star, and, and you can talk about separation till you're blue in the face. He's got more separation than Michael Thomas this year. He's got more separation than the McLaurin or Pitts. Like, targets are going to be the thing that you look at and say, Okay, you give me some targets, see what I can do with them. I think there will be resentment there. I think there will be a problem, and that doesn't mean he's going to perform. That just means it's disruptive to the team. Their yes. offense has struggled. That's Stafford, what Marshall was talking you about. cannot play Matthew Stafford in fantasy. You can't really start a running back from no. this team against Dallas. Nope, Cooper this, Cup and Tyler Higby. The McVay aroma needs to be – don't let it – trick you into playing players other than Cooper Cup. Yeah, this is a this is a game that, you know, I don't expect a lot of points in and, because and, and Tyler Higby, sorry. Yes, Tyler Higby, Cooper Cup, they're in. I would sit everybody else. I don't expect a ton of points. I mean, the over under is only forty three and I, I I side on the under of this because on both sides of the ball, like the Rams have been shutting down running backs. They are number one so far, both in uh, how many fantasy points they've given up on the season and when you adjust for the schedule. So it's really hard to say, oh, I want what Zeke's been doing. I want more of that. Or or Tony Pollard, who hasn't been involved in the passing game. So, uh, you know, CeeDee Lamb? CeeDee Lamb's looked great. With Cooper Rush, the target share is outstanding. He's the only player who has eight-plus targets every single game this season. I'm ha Basically, this is like the Cooper Cup CeeDee Lamb show where you've got the wide receiver ones going back and forth. Yeah, I'd be trying to get out of Zeke this week. I don't want to play him. He's not. I, he's been double digits one time this year. Yeah, I agree. The Try, if you can, again, running back, very tough, but if you can get Zeke on the bench and just watch what happens. But the the 19 carries, very inefficient against the Manders, but, uh, Jay, you, we were mentioning that the Manders are actually they are a good strong against the run. run defense. Not quite as good as this one. Right, but this is a thing to watch. It's here. Here is my action plan 
for Zeke. Oh, you got an action plan. Well, I just I got like looking at the schedule here. We got Rams, we got Philadelphia. Whew. That's not going to be a good time for Ezekiel Elliott. But right after that, Detroit, Chicago, a bye week, Green Bay, Minnesota, the Giants. Like okay, he, we we have a stretch run here where Zeke with Dak with with Dak coming back. You have a stretch run coming where. As long as, like, if he maintains the opportunity split, which we saw last week, Pollard was terrible last week. Uh, if Zeke can continue to maintain that, well, I'm I'm going to get 16-plus carries a week, show us that, then maybe you trade for him on the cheap if you, you need a running back, or you just you, you bench him and then have the confidence Yeah, later. two weeks from now, scoop him up off of waivers. I hear <laughs> or you. Or that, too. I hear you loud that and is the, That is not impossible, which is ridiculous. And with, with Zeke Healthy, I have never started Pollard, and I never will. Because the, the, the basement for Pollard on the, on the week is what you got last week, which is a couple of touches. And, and oh, it's, it was, it's just so risky. It was one of those really, really funny uh, stat lines where, where Tony Pollard had opportunities. He had... Uh, in fact, eight attempts. His longest carry of the day was nine yards. Okay. And he finished with six total rushing yards. <laughs> <laughs> the Bengals, Sunday night football, two and two, taking on the Ravens, two and two. The over under here is 47 and a half. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is Baltimore minus three and a half. Winner taking control of the division, Cincinnati with two straight wins after the tough start. And I feel like this, you know, if Cincinnati can get this game, it, it changes the trajectory of the whole year and the, and the feel and the vibe around the team, Joe Burrow, Mike, you have him as a start of the week. I mean, you are rubbing your hands together for yes. the fantasy upside in this matchup. Yeah. I'm so excited for this. This is the prime time palate cleanser that we all deserve after the Thursday night uh, disaster. The, the, this, the last time we saw these two teams playing, it was just fantasy explosion. Joe Burrow quarterback two, quarterback one, a game of 504. Like, this is all systems go for both sides of the ball. Burrows in, Mixon, though the inefficiency that he's had, I think it still turn, turns into fantasy points this week. I'm not concerned at all about that. Chase Higgins, like, may, may, like where are you guys with, like, Boyd this week? Uh, yeah, do you get I, I in don't, on? I don't really do that. Okay. I, don't, I don't dabble in the Boyd. I th yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame you. I just wanted to get a temperature. It's a check. little bit chasing what happened last year because if you remember the the last time these two games, uh, these two teams played, uh, the Bengals put up forty one points. The time before that, the yep. Bengals also put up forty one points. So this, uh, you know, in in division, there's going to be you know wanting to have some payback, but they wanted that last year. I think that the Bengals right now look like they've kind of got their number. And so if you wanted to throw in a flex play of Tyler Boyd, it, it, at least the matchup appears to be right for it. The the Baltimore Ravens have a banged up secondary and you, you know, I could see Boyd having a, a decent game here. Now Lamar is going to likely be without Rashad Bateman, who yeah. did not practice Wednesday, Thursday, not spotted today. That is unfortunate. And that's where this whole entire matchup can go wrong is if the Ravens can't keep up. I mean, sure. JK Dobbins, Still coming off the injury, coming off a chest injury this week. Good to go, yeah, but explosive, not quite yet. Uh, Mark Andrews didn't do much last week. He's going to have to do a lot in this game if Lamar and company are going to keep up with this with the Cincinnati offense. And then Duvernay is a great start, you know, without Bateman. Yeah, I I don't disagree with that. Uh, looking back at the the box score, so the last time Mark Andrews was against this team, he went. Eight for one twenty-five and a score. Uh, if, although the, the first time they met, it was earlier in the year last year. It was only three for forty-eight. But I think we see the the big bounce back from Mandrews. And I agree. If if Bateman is out, Duvernay is incredibly interesting. Who do you think wins this ball game? I'm just curious because I I think I am I am moving myself to the Cincinnati side. Of I things. I, I have took, the Bengals winning. I took the Bengals. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, any, anybody else on that side of the ball we need to talk about? I don't think so. Let's move to the Raiders one and three taking on did, the, did we talk about Dobbins, whether you'd start it? Cause that seems like, okay. A, so a, give me some Dobbins situations. That, that seems like a player. People are going to have a lot of questions with. Is it time? Is it time to start JK Dobbins? The utilization seems to be there. He looks fine on the field to me. He had a couple touchdowns. Um, this is a matchup issue for me. The Bengals defense is legit. 
So I don't love J.K. Dobbins this week. It's not because of the injury. It's not because of his utilization. It's just because of the matchup. So Dobbins or Damian Pierce against Jackson. Damian Pierce. Dob I thought you were going Damian Harris. Also, I would go Damian Harris. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Dobbins or Devin Singletary? Ooh, that one's really, really close. I'll take really Singletary close. against Pittsburgh. Yeah, I will as well. Okay. Devin Singletary, by the way, has run the most routes of any wide receiver or uh, running back in football. Yeah, love to see it. The Raiders, 1-3, taking on the 3-1 and one Chiefs. DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Chiefs, minus 7 at home. The over-under is 51.5, the highest of the week. The Chiefs have... Uh, well, they got the inverse cousins. They they like to put up big games on Monday Night Football. They've won six straight. Mahomes has uh, – he owns the Raiders. 7-1 against them in his career, averaging 318 and 2.75 touchdowns. He's good. So you should play him. Play Patrick Mahomes. I concur. Stay in the flames with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Would you play him over Russell Wilson? Uh, oh, that's just mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I would. Uh, what about the wide receiver room for the Chiefs? Right now, it's been a mess. Juju's wide receiver, 48 on the year. I think we're all praying and hoping this guy more can, can earn a bigger role, but that it's very, very unrealistic to think that Sky Moore will do a takeover of this offense because they're succeeding, right? They're winning ball games. They're not looking at the stat lines. MVS and Juju are contributing to a working offense. I just don't see a world where Sky Moore is startable anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could I could see that happening um, actually in, in the next couple of weeks just based on the utilization. He has not been involved in the passing game. He's been a special teams player. Uh, you know, you look back 4% of snaps, 13% of snaps. This last week, he was actually involved in the offense. He played 28% of snaps, still a very low amount of snaps here, but got four targets while he was on the field. So when he was there, the the targets per route run, which is a sticky stat, uh, were good for Sky Moore. So he's not someone you're – certainly you're not starting him now. Goodness, no. You're waiting until maybe he gets up to 70% uh, snap participation. You're right, Andy. That's where that, I don't think he can get to. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any chance in heck he can get there. That was going to be my question. Like, Meanwhile, we have – Juju is on the season sitting at a 67% of the snaps, a 19% target share. MVS is 74% of the snaps, a 16% target share. Like, Sky Moore. McCall would, Hardman's at 56%. Like, Moore would have to siphon so many targets from around just to get to the the 15% where. I don't I, know if Sky's the limit here. Oh, very. Ooh, oh, let me, yep. That works. The, I, I like the player. I like the prospects. And I, I, I'm not disagreeing with if you're in, you know, if you have a bigger fantasy bench, stash him and see what happens. But it's it's a long ways away. Yeah, I mean, he might not be able to play his way in front. He, he legitimately might not be able to. But, you know, we, we've we've seen it with other players al already. And one injury to one of those three wide yeah. receivers, all of a that sudden, Sky a Moore difference. is necessary and hopefully more talented than what we've seen from the other guys. If you That's have right. to start one. You're starting Juju yep. as a flex option. Uh, if Patrick Mahomes is averaging, you know, what he he's just been dominating the Raiders forever, I think Juju could have a fine game here. All right, uh, and MVS will catch three passes, and it'll be meaningless. Isaiah Pacheco, would you play him over Tyler Algier? Ooh. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think we can do that yet. Um, Isaiah Pacheco looked good. I think he's their most talented runner on the team. He got 11 carries last week, which was awesome, but it's the first time we've really seen him uh, take that type of a role over. I know he got 12 carries in week one, but if you don't remember, that was all garbage time in the fourth quarter when it was back. I think you need to color in that Clyde Edwards-Alaire also got 19 carries right. last week. So, like, there was an explosion of running back attempts for the Kansas City Chiefs that we are not used to seeing. Jason, I'd be curious what the schedule adjusted defense of the Chiefs is doing because not in terms, good. In terms of total points given up, they're they've been really bad. I mean, twenty two to the quarterback, that's twenty eighth in the league. They are twenty eighth when you adjust for schedule. Yeah, so uh, in the running back position, twenty seventh in the league. They are twenty eighth when adjusted for schedule. And then thirty two points a game given up to wideouts, twenty fourth. Yep, twenty second. They 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 are not they're not a they're, good defense. Yeah, so they, and part of that might just be you know. They score quickly, 
and uh, volume, right? So, in in teams, when you play against the Chiefs, you you're less likely, you're more likely to go for it on a fourth or try to. You know, you've got to be more aggressive because you don't feel like you can win a game putting up twenty points. And so that's something yeah, you're not that this, facing Russell Wilson. Exactly, that's something that this defense, even if they're better than. Um, the average defense, the other offenses are going to be more aggressive, which is great for fantasy. So I think Derek Carr is a great start this week on the road, Monday night football. Uh, Devontae Adams leading the NFL in red zone targets gives Derek Carr the upside in this game that he needs. And Hunter Renfro returned to a full practice. Awesome. He should be back out there. This will balance the offense even more. Where are we with Darren Waller? Because it's oh, been disappointing man. so far, but I mean. You know who Darren Waller is to me? Kyle Pitts? He, no, he's George Kittle. <laughs> like it's we, the it, we at least have a a tight end two finish on the year from Waller. Well, right, because he's I'm he's, saying this for the Pitts comment. Sure, yeah, yeah. No, he's definitely not Kyle Pitts. <laughs> but um, my my point is, you you've had a couple of real dud games from Waller in a row because yeah. he he is not necessarily the number one or number two target. You know, you've got. More. And Matt Collins keeps growing. I think that's the biggest problem for Waller. Yeah, he's the new tight end. Um, Kyle he, Pitts has outscored Waller by quite a, quite a lot in the last two weeks. In the last two? <laughs> in the yeah. last two weeks. By what's what's quite a lot? Uh, 14 to 6. Okay. Uh, was, was his bigger one week three? Bigger being 11 points, yeah. <laughs> um, but Waller, I mean, that why, that two yeah. finish was like 14 or something. So. Yeah, so the, the, um, the point here is he is a I love guy you, Kyle. that has physical Pitts. ability – to have a big game so you have to continue to play him you're going to get stinkers because he is not the number one or number two read in the offense Kyle, or uh darren waller oh okay or tyler higby i would go waller i want i want well, to take higby right now yeah i mean you don't want you don't like 10 receptions <laughs> oh i love 10 receptions i don't i don't know that that's going to happen this week against the cowboys i realize yeah, that it's probably 15 <laughs> just that because the snap <laughs> the ball and scream yeah uh, by the way, some injury updates for you. Curtis Samuel not listed on the injury report. Should be back. Jahan Dotson's ruled out. And Logan Thomas, questionable now with a calf oh, injury. So okay. don't pivot yeah. to Logan Thomas. Yeah, bail out. All right, let's move on. Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Well, I've I've spent two weeks uh, pivoting off of the Josh Allen default start, and I've spent two weeks losing. So I am uh, going to spin the wheel today. Wheel of shame. So I'm going to spin the wheel. By the way, I'm I'm definitely going to win this week. So okay. I, I hope you made a, a good choice here on the wheel of shame. Yeah, you'll you'll find out. So oh we boy. got All right, let's spin this thing. Banana face. Uh rainy day. Geezer. And <laughs> and we have landed on oh, Cyberpunk. Should I be afraid of what's going to happen here? I'm you're so you're, Cyberpunk. You're going to look great, man. You're going to like the way you look. <laughs> Do I need my hat off? Yes, you're going to need okay. to take that hat yeah. off. This is a multi-piece. Sorry, Mr. Denver. Set up. Uh, so we have, we've got the glasses. We've got a, well, look at those sunnies. I'm not going to be able to read my lineup. Well, we'll, we'll figure that out for what you. Is, Don't what even, is this? <laughs> it's got lights in it. You're up. You're. <laughs> oh, very, what a nice mohawk. He's got a big red lighting up move mohawk. It? I can't even tell if it's on right. Is also, it the Jordy uh, shades are quite something That's a, that man's right out of the future wow i feel like i am uh in a post-apocalyptic you are definitely going to pick on the marty mcfly the fourth or whatever he is <laughs> since when did you become the physical type <laughs> there you go <laughs> uh all right we are into the line oh man this side shot looks so good <laughs> the mohawk is so big all right well look i feel good about my lineup this week gentlemen so i hope that you i hope it's as good as you look well, what would you guys do at quarterback this week? I went back and forth and back and forth between Tom Brady and Josh Allen. I could not get myself to avoid the value of Tom Brady at 6,000. Same, bro. What he has done against I have, Atlanta. I have Tom Brady. Yeah, All I right. figured that Tom, look, Tom Brady at 6,000 is just too big of a value against the Falcons to pay up for it. So we, we washed each other out at yep. the quarterback position. Right. Who are your running backs, Jason? 
My running backs are my running backs in the league of record. So I'm either going to have a really good week or a really bad wow. week. I'm going to tilt like crazy. I'm going Derrick Henry paying up 8,200. Uh, not the greatest matchup, but I'm hoping for snow on the ground in Vermont. And Austin Eckler, 7,800. Wow. So I've, I've paid up for two big dogs Whoa. at running back. Yeah, that's the Brady discount, right? Mike, that's what did exciting. you do at running back? Uh, I took uh, some some mid level values. I took Jason's start of the week, which I'm a little surprised you didn't go there. I'm going with James Robinson at 6300 against the Houston Texans, expecting a big day. And then I have Andy's start of the week, Kareem Hunt at 6000 at home against the Chargers. All right, I've got. Uh, by the way, James Robinson plus 100 to score a touchdown this week because he's in my lineup as well. I got one of each of your running backs. I got James Robinson at 6300. And Derrick Henry. You look ridiculous. I look really <laughs> how, cool. How do you feel? Do you feel cooler right now? Well, I, it's all a, kind of a, like a dark mist. That I, so the only thing I can see is this colorful. Well, wow, this is. Like if I gave you. Uh, a, a nice mohawk. Or if like I gave you a, a really complex firewall, what is the chances that you could. Oh, I could break? hack that thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could hack it. No, I got Derrick Henry and James Robinson as my running backs. Okay. That's nice. Derrick Henry, uh, DK Sportsbook line, his projection is already over 100 all purpose yards. So you got a nice baseline there. Okay, Jay, who are your wide receivers? At wide receiver, I have. CD Lamb, I know he's dealing with the the groin, yeah. but uh, I I think CD Lamb at seven thousand is too good a deal. Chris Godwin stacking with Tom Brady at only fifty nine hundred feels like stealing, and then Chris Olave at fifty seven hundred. My start of the week at wide receiver. I think I've got three solid wide receivers that are all decent dis discounts. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in real quick because I have two thirds of that. I have uh, Chris Godwin. Yep. To stack with Tom Brady. Yep, and I have Chris Olave. Jason also has him fifty seven hundred, and then my third wide receiver is AJ Brown against Arizona seventy five hundred. Oh, it's the wide receiver ones not as dominant against Arizona. It'll be interesting to see what AJ Brown can do. Uh, I have Stephon Diggs because you still got to get some of that sweet sweet Josh mm -hmm. Allen action mm -hmm. at eighty four hundred, and I saved them in running backs. I also have Chris Godwin, and my third wide receiver is my star of the week. It is Mister Robert Woods right now in the sports book. He's only how much at, is he? Yeah, well, his line is fifty-one and a half receiving yards, and I am absolutely taking the over on that. And Robert Woods fifty-two hundred. Okay, Jason, why don't you wrap up your lineup here? Tight end, flex, and defense. Sure, I'm out of money, so my my uh, tight end is Tyler Conklin, thirty-seven hundred. Uh, I can only make this lineup work with uh, Khalil Shakir, who is thirty-two hundred. I'm playing him with or without Isaiah McKenzie, and I assume we all have the Cowboys. At twenty five hundred, I do. They are super cheap and will yep. have about twelve hundred sacks. Yeah, I have the Cowboys as well. Okay, uh, my flex is Ceedee Lamb at seven thousand dollars, which means I also ran out of money. So I went with the ultimate tight end punt play of OJ Howard nice. at just twenty six hundred. We're riding together, oh, baby. Let's go, OJ. I've got OJ Howard at twenty six hundred, which makes my flex fifty three hundred. Rashad Penny. I'm going with Rashad Penny this week. The volume, the opportunity at 5,300. I had some lineups early in the in Go the week. Go back to the main shot so we can really take in that mohawk. Yeah, mm. buddy. Oh. Yep, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> Mad Max down the street. Yes. Uh, this is, you know, I feel really cool. This is the coolest I've ever felt. I like it. I mean, uh, Broncos country. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. What a nice uh, character you've created for yourself. Yes, uh, that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code BALLERS to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on in any football game. That's the code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Any other updates, gentlemen, before I sign off? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty blind in these. These are dark. I mean, these will... This will handle that post-apocalyptic, sun-filled, dusty You're world. Good. Hey, I will see everybody Sunday morning for Sunday Live. Have a good weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.